if you would like to leave me a comment uh, of a question that you may have on this particular video or just in general, or if you would like to just make a comment uh, about these videos, uh, you can go to my website, robinbromfield.com, and, and there, as I've said before, there's resources, books listed for dating, uh, child rearing, uh, marriage, finances, spirituality, a, a lot of different topics if, if you'd like additional information. Uh, today, our, our passage is going to be starting in, in Genesis uh, chapter 1. How, how can it be that when we come to church and have the Spirit within us, He is inside of us, how can it be that we have Him inside of us, yet we act so lifeless? on the outside. Uh, the spirit is one of emotion and one of knowledge as well, but having the spirit within us seems like we should have some emotion when we come to church. So many people go to church and you would think that they were not enjoying themselves at all and the way that they look and respond to the worship service of the living God through the Holy Spirit. You see, I'm not advocating that a fake smile go on your face and that you go to church every Sunday with this look of happiness and joy and just tremendous abundance of joy going on in your life when in fact, you're really hurting inside. You you have a deep need that you would love to share. I'm not advocating putting on a fake smile, but I am advocating that we let the Spirit of God deal with us. And as we think of the Spirit of God, our minds should go to Galatians 5, verses 22 and 23, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Well, what is the fruit of the Spirit? The fruit of the Spirit are things that we have in our lives because we have the Spirit living inside of us. It's the Spirit's fruit in our lives that we can experience. And because of that, when we come to church, we could say, where's the joy of the Lord? <laughs> that just doesn't seem to be a lot of joy in a lot of churches that uh, people go to. And if the church that you're going to is one that is full of joy, praise the Lord and thank him for giving you a place where you can go and have a joyful worship service. Uh, where's the love? I'm not talking about just words about love. I'm talking about actual acts of kindness shown to one another, being people of grace, showing love to one another. And where's the laughter? <laughs> Some people say, well, you shouldn't take God uh, in such a manner that you laugh. You should be more stoic. You should be more uh, firm in your convictions. Who do you think created laughter? <laughs> It was God himself. It was Christ. He created laughter for us to enjoy. I'm not saying that everything needs to be funny or joyful or full of laughter, but there is definitely an absence of that in a lot of churches that people go to. And let me just ask this as well. Where are the tears of joy and sorrow? Where are the tears that will dwell up in our eyes when we're just so full of joy that we can't stand it. And then as well, when we're going through hard times, difficult times, sorrowful times, where are those tears as well? You see, intimacy with God cannot occur in an emotional vacuum. You, you can't take emotions completely out of the Christian life and say that you're living the Christian life. At times, Christ even works through our emotions and the results that we get are nothing short 
than being electrifying in a relationship with him. Let's take a look first at some overview of the book of Genesis, especially in Genesis chapter 1. In all the created things that God made, he made them, as it says, after their kind. He made them similar to one another, and all the ones that he made, he made them similar to one another after their kind. Uh, this included the plants. He, inclu he took and created the plants after their kind. He created the trees after their kind. And the fish and the birds, there again, both of them, according to their own kind, the animals and even the insects. He created them all after their kind. It's good to note that when God came to his crowning work, the most magnificent work that he was going to do, that a man and woman, he patterned them after himself. <laughs> Isn't that great? To know that you're created in God's image. You're created in the image of God. Not just some random creation, but in the image of God himself. And all humanity since then bears that same stunning level made in his image. We see that in Genesis 1, verses 26 and 27. If you have your Bible, just follow along with me. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Now look at 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Wow. Isn't it tremendous to know that you are created in God's image? That we are in the image of God. That we reflect God. That the things that we do should reflect the Lord God here on this earth. Well, let's take a look at a few things uh, about mankind that is reflected in the lives of Adam and Eve. Uh, God has a mind, and he created Adam and Eve with a mind. They, they were created with a high intellect, with a high IQ. You see, with a keen, sharp mind, Adam names all the animals. Can you imagine that? Naming every single animal on the face of the earth, being able to come up with a name that is different, being able to name that animal, that is a high intellect. We, we see that he did that in Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 20. It says, so Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the year, and every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. Adam named all the animals, and after he did, he, he, he realized that he didn't have a helper. Well, God wanted to remedy that situation. And, and we see that Adam and Eve had a mind, both of them, and they communicate with each other. We see that in Genesis 2, verse 23. It says, And Adam said, This is now bone of my bone, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. In other words, they were fused together physically, in the same flesh and in the same mind, 
with one another, being able to relate to one another. Another thing that we notice about Adam and Eve that relates to us as well is that God has a heart and he created Adam and Eve with a heart. They both have a heart. By a heart, we're not talking about the organ that uh, pumps our blood. We're referring to the capacity, uh, the full range of emotions that we experience. We experience so many emotions. No doubt, Adam felt that extreme emotion when he first met Eve. Look at, again, at, at Genesis 2, 23. It says, and Adam said, this is now. <laughs> That's not a really good translation from the Hebrew. The Hebrew says, wow, look at her. She's a 10. <laughs> he was beside himself at the beauty that he beheld, showing that emotion. So both Adam and Eve were overcome with love for one another. They loved one another. Yet when they sinned, they felt negative emotions. They felt the emotions of shame and fear. We see that in Genesis 3, verse 10. It says, So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. There again, showing that he is a person of emotions. Well, God has a will for Adam and Eve, that he created them with a will. Unlike the birds and the beasts of the air that go on instinct, man can make a choice. We have the freedom and the responsibility to make decisions. We have the freedom to make decisions. We are free to make whatever decision we want, but with that decision comes responsibility. We're held responsible for the decisions that we make. And if we make decisions, then we'll start with the consequences of those decisions. Those consequences can be good or they can be bad, depending upon the decision that we make of obeying God or not. Because it's our choice. We can either obey God or choose not to obey him it's totally up to us. God gave a command concerning eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and man makes his choice. Look at this in Genesis 2, 16 and 17. It says, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Adam and Eve chose not to obey God and to eat of that fruit. Also, we decide if we will obey God or if we will not. Just like Adam and Eve suffered severe penalties and consequences, negative consequences because of their actions. You know that when we make decisions against God, that we will receive negative consequences as well. It's our decision. We, we can make whatever decision we want, but with that decision comes responsibility and with the responsibility comes consequences, either good or bad. Let's take a look at just a few things if we wrap up here uh, with a message today. You have a mind, so use it to daily think of biblical truth. Psalm 1 commands us to do that, to use our mind to think of the Word of God daily. You have a heart, so use it to express your emotions to Christ. You have a heart and the Spirit gives us those emotions. Don't be afraid. Let them be shown in your life. And you have a will. So use that will to glorify Christ in your actions. Let your actions be such that you will glorify Christ.
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the study that we're doing of the Holy Spirit. Help us realize, Lord, that we have a will that we need to follow to be obedient to you, that we need to let our emotions flow through our heart and guide us and direct us in allowing the Spirit to control us. Help us to be sensitive to the Spirit and help us to be obedient to do whatever he tells us to do. Today, tomorrow, and every day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks for listening to today's message. Have another message for you next Tuesday. Have a great week. And remember, you want to send me some kind of a comment, you, you can do it at my website, robinbrofield.com. Until next week, have a great week.